I feel that everything that's visual is mine. I own it. I look at it, it becomes my property. That is the visual. I have been taught how to look with my teacher at the Bauhaus Art School. It was he actually. He taught me how to, not just to look, but how to see. I owe him everything. These three are from Europe. This one was a photographer who took photographs of my work. And that photographer, I was still at art school. I don't know how it came about. Somebody wanted photographs of my work. The photographer said, well, money means nothing to me. He said, but if you do a, a cartoon of me, I'll take them for you, to you for nothing. So he took a whole number of photographs of my work, and I made this one for him. The camp commander of the United Nations Relief and Rehabilitation Association or something, where my mother was a doctor. Refugees were being looked after. And he saw this too, and he said, do, do one of me too. I can only remember that people asked me to do cartoons of them. They didn't want a portrait, because it was probably something to do with, you know, with a general sense of humor. They wanted to have a laugh. And it was very good for me. You had to catch the essence of a face. It actually led to proper appreciation of portraiture. It was good training. From the art school, these are live drawings of at that time. These are self-portraits. That was just a plaster cast at the art school, Field Marshal Hindenburg. There were lots of plaster casts that appealed to me most. The director of the Bathurst camp, he wanted to see all my work. And there were lots of people buying my watercolors. Not lots of people, but some. And so amongst the, these were these photos. The director of the camp, Rees, he said, Oh, I want to have this to decorate the kindergarten and the community hall in that style. Can you do that? So that was one all that were the great Australian sportsmen of the day, the tennis players, and a boxer, and a golfer. It was meant to be an educational. The migrants who came should become familiar with the greats of Australian sports underneath the cartoons were the names of the sportsmen, so they didn't have to ask who's that. That was a kindergarten. That's the fish. The fish was a kindergarten. And this is um, the views from the Bathurst camp. And that was my studio in Bathurst. It was under the stage of the theater. So I had, had paints and things. On top of that, I did my own painting, and they said, under the stage there's lots of empty room. And I had a look, and it was a beautiful window there, too. I don't consider myself as a, an artist. I consider myself as a painter. So if there is a surface, I can paint it. And if I know that I can paint it, I do paint it.
and somehow, you know, sort of certain things that I paint on walls, paint on ceilings, I wouldn't put on canvas because the surface is different. One thing is sort of, I, I don't even know how to put it into words, that uh, my painting is not decorative. Whether it's walls or something, I'm not doing it to decorate it. It always has another purpose apart from decoration. Well, the painting of tabletops, for instance, has always been a great pleasure to me. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I completely succeed in painting these tabletops <laughs> when I see somebody trying to pick up a fork <laughs> or a, a spoon. And that's the pleasure, kind of a wicked pleasure almost. So it, it seems to be as if with all painting that I'm doing, that there is somewhere a point of departure. I know what can be done. I know how it should be done. And I'm doing it. And the three things are not separate from each other. It is just a logical consequence, like the growth of a plant. <laughs>